Hello YouTube, this is just going to be a quick overview of my wireframing tool of choice, Go Mockingbird at GoMockingbird.com. For those who don't know what a wireframe is, a wireframe is basically a simple representation of where your content is going to go on your website. So in this case scenario, we actually see um, CNN.com and a wireframe to the right. The wireframe here to the right just kind of represents where everything is laid out. Typically when I build websites, I usually always wireframe. With the wireframe, it kind of helps me sort out navigation issues, content issues, uh, where to place certain elements. Uh, before I actually discovered wireframing, a lot of my sites weren't consistent looking, didn't optimize the space on the page, those sort of issues. So with wireframing, that kind of fixes that. Here's another example uh, with NewYorkTimes.com. This is a wireframe. For that, uh, you can kind of see where everything gets simplified in this case scenario here. As a designer, you would, if you're using wireframes in the case like I would, you would start off here first, and then you would go into your mock-up or comp tool of choice. In my case, that's usually uh, Photoshop. Some cases I just go directly into the browser with with uh, HTML and CSS and just kind of lay everything out. Okay, so I'm going to actually fire up the program now so we can kind of look at it and see how it works. If you are looking for a wireframing program, I think this is probably one of the better ones. Um, it is online, so it does require an internet uh, connection, but I mean, we're building websites, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so now we have the application launched up. Um, to your left here is basically the sidebar where all your wireframing components are. Towards the top, this basically this ribbon up towards the top allows you to you know align elements if you need something aligned um, to change the order stacking order of different elements on your wireframe to group elements um, to ungroup elements your undos you know a uh, whole nine yards okay so I'm just gonna draft up something real quick let's say that I'm building out uh, let's say you know a home page for a client so this is the process that I would go through I typically start with you know just a basic rectangle or a box I kinda lay it out here another option that's available is that they are, there's actually a grid system layout in here so if you um, you know, if you want to use like a 16 column or 12 column grid, kind of lay out your elements, it's already in here for you. So, so let's say we use a 12 column grid. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lay out this box here to kind of demonstrate how this works. So, okay, so we can kind of just look at this as just being, you know, your, your main page area. Okay. Go ahead and drag an image in here. This is going to basically represent the logo. Got some text. It's your tagline. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Okay, uh, there are a lot of already built-in components, so let's say that you want a navigation bar. There are a couple of different options here. Let's say, uh, let's just go with this rounded one here. Okay, so set out our pages, home page. Okay, so we get this in place here. Go ahead and lay it out. Typically, when I build sites, I like to um, have content contact information towards the top. So I would usually put something like, you know, phone number here. This a little larger as well, 16 points. 
kind of line everything up here. Okay, so that's good there. Let's put in some social links. Here, let me go down here. Facebook, Twitter. Uh, just add a RSS, I guess that's fine. Everything lined up. Then you can group these elements so that you can move everything together. So I'm holding down the shift key, I'm gonna group it. So now when I move it, it's one single element. So, okay. Make this a little bit larger here. 16, this 20. Uh, 18. All right, let's go ahead and group these together as well. Okay, I can also add a search to the site. So let's see, there's an element for that. Okay, we'll just use this text box. Let's build one real quick. Okay, now it's just a matter of me figuring out where I want to put the search at. I guess I can put the search towards the top. Line this up here. That's going to require that I um, ungroup these, and I'm going to actually shrink down my icons. I'm going to group these. Another good thing as well is that. Um, as you shrink these down, you have some type of context clues to let you know exactly what size each element is going to be. I mean, there's not much precision, but I mean, it's pretty close. So let's make these 30 each so that they're pretty consistent. Space them out. All right. Group them again. Place this here. I'm gonna move these elements down. Okay, that's lined up there. Okay, so I went ahead and took the liberty just to create a uh, you know, a simple web page layout, a wireframe, just to kind of see the thought process and how I kind of lay things out when I'm building websites. Um, typically what I would do before this process, I would actually um, create like an outline of the information. You know, I would usually use a program like FreeMind to kind of lay out all the information so I know which pages the site would have what type of content and what type of content I would actually like to have presented on the home page. So in this case scenario, you know, you would have your featured article here. Could be a blog post or could be like a link to maybe a service or something of the sort. Or some case scenarios, instead of this being like an article, some people may just put like, you know, a slider or some other type of, you know, um, call to action area. Okay. What I typically do on home pages as well is I would actually add in information here. Um, in these case scenarios, I um, just for the sake of speed, I didn't add in a title for each one of these elements. But typically, I would have an image here. Then there would be a title. There would be some copy, and then of course maybe you know a button or some type of link to go to the article or blog post. However, your site is laid out. Okay, your copyright information and your links. I always ensure that there are links 
at the bottom and at the top. So if you're at the bottom of a site, you want to go to another page instead of having to scroll the way to the top, you have easy access. I think it just kind of makes, you know, the usability of your site in general better. So Yeah, so that's basically it. I mean, from this step here, after I have a pretty solid wireframe done, then I would, you know, go into either Photoshop and kind of lay all these elements out, kind of play around with color and fonts and things like that to kind of get something that works. I will send a couple of drafts to the client. Uh, the client will kind of go through everything and then we make our revisions from that process and then I would start the coding process. In some case scenarios, let's say that I, um, you know, I'm building on top of an existing theme that a client already has or, you know, I'm already kind of in the process maybe doing a redesign and there's already some type of code in place. Then at that point, I would just, you know, um, using this as a guide, I would start coding the HTML and the CSS to kind of get everything to lay out the way that um, this is laid out here. You know, if it's WordPress, then if I would add in the necessary PHP tags to bring in the content. Let's say that this was like, you know, a featured blog post, I'd pull in a WordPress loop. Or if it, it was, you know, a Drupal site and this was like a block region, or even if it was like views or something, um, I would use whatever technique was necessary to get the, resi the desired result of laying out the content the way that you see here. Cool, so that is basically it. Um, you kind of see the process that I go through, um, the thought process of laying out information in an actual site. Um, the wireframe would be a lot more complex than this. It would look probably closer towards something like this. Um, this is pretty low fidelity. I would actually, you know, have a little bit of a higher fidelity type of layout, like this where there's actual text and label area so that the client knows what to expect as far as what air, which you know regions cover which type of content and then that sort of thing cool but yeah i, I like uh, go mockingbird it's pretty good um, if you are looking for a wireframing program that's simple to use that's pretty straightforward uh, i would definitely check it out this one is only nine dollars a month for their base plan um, you know, they have other options, you know, if you have, you know, a larger team, that sort of thing. But I just, you know, I'm kind of a solo freelancer, so this kind of works best for me. Cool. So hopefully you guys find this helpful. If you do, leave a comment, you know, subscribe. I'll have more videos coming up soon. Thanks.